Thank you. I'm returning back to general questions. Um, uh, can you tell about yourself? What's your, I guess, uh, essence and biology? I am Liren. Uh huh. I have come to Earth, or had come to Earth, uh -huh. for many different reasons, not to become a god. I see. But to do training, to exchange philosophies, and to observe the peoples. Uh -huh. Also, there are many in the Egyptian cultures that were not human that I needed to speak to about some social events happening in the galactic arena. Uh -huh. Therefore, it was, I was there off and on for many years. Mm -hmm. I did not stay on, the, on your planet for more than a month or two at a time. Uh -huh. But they did not see me leave, and so therefore they could not record that I was gone because they could have just thought that I was out of sight for a while. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the people did not know that I was traveling to other places. Mm -hmm. When I was on your world, I saw many things that were interesting. Mm -hmm. I did not stay in the Egyptian area, as you call it, but I went to India. I went to South America and Central America. And once I even went to what you call the United Kingdom. Oh, wow. These places were fascinating, and I could learn many things. It was a time when the peoples were not paying attention to me, but at war in some places and paying attention to themselves about power and religion. Mm -hmm. I could easily escape their vision. Oh, so you weren't visible? At times I was, mm -hmm. but they, but not in open areas. Mm -hmm. So, um, how was uh, England at that time? Uh, was it like a few thousand before, before, before uh, uh, BC, before Christ? So, um, were there like Nordic gods at that time? There were many people, but they were very warlike at that time. Uh -huh. They were trying to establish power and try to establish land ownership. Mm -hmm. So it was a constant battle with them. It was a dark time, in my opinion. Uh, so in addition to humans, which uh, were other powers? What other powers in Egypt? No, in, in Britain. There were, there were some Norse people there, but they uh -huh. were not involved in those battles at that time. They were involved in the northern battles in Scandinavian areas. But the this, this is... Of them I heard, but I this did is... not see them face to face. So these are still humans, right? Or foreigners? Yes, these are humans that I was watching. So in addition to humans, were there like other species which were fighting as well? There were still some druids available back then, but they kept to themselves and were not part of the wars. But the Nordic gods weren't part of the wars, right? Not at that time. I see. And dwarves and others won't, elves or any other won't, won't fight in these wars? No. I see. The, the elementals of your planet are not known to be warlike. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 
So uh, you weren't part of the politics, or were you? No, not in that area. I, I was part of politics in Egypt, South mm -hmm. America, and Central America to some extent. Wow. What was your uh, official status in the galaxy? I was a queen. Uh, queen of what? In Lyran circles, I was a queen. Now, so it was of... not from the Lyran planet because, of course, it was gone. Uh -huh. But I had established a kingdom in Orion. So it was a local queen or a local local kingdom or was it the whole diaspora? It was a kingdom in the Orion area and I was a major power along with several others that were ruling in that part of the galaxy. The Orions were a very large part of your seeding and a uh -huh. large part of the very early progress of your planet. The uh -huh. Stargates were one of our responsibilities. We are responsible for building many Stargates on your world. Thank you. Many uh -huh. more were built by others. But we were the beginnings of these. The ones in Egypt and Machu Picchu, Kenkor, and the Aztec ones. The one at Stonehenge, uh -huh. which is underground. We were responsible for these. We taught the Druids how to construct Stonehenge and it points to the Orion area. So in your kingdom, um, what were the major species? There is a canine species that is, was more powerful then than it is now. They have mm -hmm. become peaceful and they've become uh, very much pulled away from uh, political intergalactic politics. But there also was the blue avians, which were very powerful. And the Orions, the Anunnaki. There were many that showed their face in this area at this time. Ra was a different kind of species as well. And there were others, such as Octorians and Syrians, that sometimes would visit as well. But they are not known to the people of Egypt. They kept out of sight. They did not want to be seen. They were higher dimensional and would be rather frightening to the people. We were able to disguise ourselves in human bodies. Our heads were not human, but they could understand us a little better if we showed ourselves in a human persona in some way. Thank you. Um, I'm thinking now about the time, that time, which is a few thousand years ago, and Orion area and your kingdom. And um, I wonder uh, how much in your kingdom were Lyrans and how much were uh, part of your kingdom, how many were percent wise were like human looking Orions and, and uh, were the Blue Evans part of your kingdom or were like more like allies? They were allies, but the uh -huh. human looking Orions were part of my kingdom. Uh -huh. I should say queendom, because uh -huh. I, I was in charge. Uh -huh. The thing is, there were four planets that I ruled mm -hmm. in the Orion area. Mm -hmm. 
There were human-looking Orions. There were some Syrians. There were Lyrans, of course. But the highest population was the human-looking Orions. Uh-huh. That's what I thought, uh-huh. I see now. So are you still in the physical? No. Uh -huh. I have returned to the physical several times, but I am right now in the astral or in the oversoul or whatever you want to call it. I could explain right. it in many ways. Right. So uh, what happened to your kingdom? What happened to what? To your kingdom. When I passed, someone else took it over. But it is no longer a kingdom. They turned it into a different political kind of society. Right. So what's your role in our uh, timeline right now? What is my role? Yeah. I have no role in your timeline at this uh -huh. point. Except for to help and counsel humans if they wish my counsel. I see. Thank you. You are welcome. Uh, what's your connection to cats? I am one. Right. I mean, to, to Earth cats, Earth cats, our planet cats. There are several species of cats in the galaxy. Uh -huh. The ones brought to your planet were not advanced. There are uh -huh. some that are more advanced than others. Uh -huh. Some can understand when we speak Lyran, but others <laughs> cannot. So therefore, they are from a few different places. You might notice their varieties. Right. We are happy to yeah. have brought them, but they mm -hmm. are not from our area. Mm -hmm. They are from Octaurus area, they are from Cassiopeia area, and they are from Alpha Centauri area. What's the mission of cats in the, on, on our planet? They are protectors. Hmm. Consider it. <laughs> they were actually worshipped by the Egyptians for their protective abilities. Their hearing is very good and they could alert the kings and queens to any intruders easily. Ah. They can also telepathically communicate some thoughts. They are attached to their owners. Uh-huh. They can telepathy, telepathically speak to their owners in some non-verbal ways. I notice our kids um, disappear once in a while. I wonder if they just disappear from the dimension altogether and then come back. Unlikely. However, if they have another interdimensional owner, it is possible. But usually cats are adventurous and try to find a way to entertain themselves and feed themselves because they like doing these things. Yeah, recently I, I made a discovery. Like, I, I, It's still a hypothesis, but a very interesting one. So my cat, um, the previous cat, the male one, was um, bringing mice to, to the home and releasing them. And I realized that, that the kids, instead of uh, controlling the mouse population in the house, they actually seed and breed them in the house. So that, that picture of cats and mice, and people believing that the cats are actually uh, removing mice, I think that's the other way around. They bring mice and, and breed them in the house. It's like a, an agricultural... These are their uh, toys. 
Sometimes they play too hard with them and mm -hmm. kill them, but then they became become a dinner only after that. Uh huh. But they like having them around to play with. Uh huh. Uh huh. But not all cats are breeders of mice. Some do kill them and eat them because that is what they feel they should do. They first bring them as a gift to the owner sometimes. Uh huh. And then take them away. Uh huh. Letting the owner know that they are doing what they are supposed to be doing or letting them know that this is a token of their esteem to the owners right so what's your role in the um, uh Liran society now are you a goddess or revered queen no longer i am in spirit at this time so i am no longer revered as a queen but I am a spirit. Uh -huh. I so guess they... I could be revered in the past as a queen and as a leader, but that those days have passed and I do not wish to repeat them. So you're not a goddess of Lyrans? I am what they wish me to be. I can give great advice to them. Uh -huh. Some called me a goddess, but in truth and reality, I was a being like everyone else, just right. in a very high position. I see. Our technology would make us appear like gods and goddesses. However, that does not mean because we were advanced, we were actually part of God's kingdom in that way. Right. Speaking about technology, in those times, a few thousand years ago, how was the star travel? You know, you used the stargates, right? We used stargates, but there were also those that still used dimensional travel and wormholes. Uh -huh. they, were, they were also popular. They were not as safe as the Stargates. The Stargates had been proven to be safe for many hundreds of years. And so wormholes could have organic problems. Uh -huh. And so therefore we're not always safe. But they were considered 97.4% safe, where Stargates were 99.3% safe. So how did, the, uh, how did the ships change since then, like the starships? The starships are now either much larger or much smaller, uh -huh. depending on the species. It is trendy to have a very small ship if you are moving intergalactically by yourself. Now, mm -hmm. many of those that move intergalactically alone must be cautious. There mm -hmm. are areas in space that are unsafe and they can cause themselves much damage if they run into these without warning. However, most ships are equipped with safety indicators for gas pockets and for asteroid belts and things of this nature. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our, my image of ships comes from Star Trek. And I wonder how, how much different the ships were at that time uh, in Egyptian times. They were actually very similar to some of the designs that you might see 
from the that era of your mm -hmm. spaceship movies. Mm -hmm. uh, but not exactly the same, of course. But some were very long mm -hmm. and had asymmetrical designs. Mm -hmm. And other were very symmetrical in, and sleek, depending mm -hmm. on what the use for this ship was. If they were a carrier of cargo and transport for many, then they could be very large and unsightly. Whereas those that are explore exploration ships and scientific ships were more sleek and aerodynamic. I see. Uh do they have like up and down the, the artificial gravity and uh, do people actually walk in them or in the corridors? Yes. It is very possible to have that. Anti-gravity is, can be solved by rotation in some scenarios. Uh -huh. And others, they use different technologies to ward off the anti-gravity symptoms and actualities. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. How long was your life? How long was my life? Uh -huh. It was not gr a great long life. Mm -hmm. I lived only 132 years. Oh, wow. Wait a second, but uh, Egyptian history is like more like 4,000 or so. So you weren't there for the rest of the time? No, I was not there all the time, no. But did you cover the whole history or were you just there for a short period? I was there off and on for about 80 years. Huh. I see. You will find that Egyptian history does not say how long I was there. I see. But that I did have a great deal of power among the people. Maybe there was that a substitute? That does not mean that I was eternal. Was there a substitute for you? Maybe there was another Liron who played your role? It is possible, but I do not see that. Right, uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I had another question. Uh, humans uh, can be sorted by the ones who are more like dog people and the ones who are cat people. Uh, what's the background for that? The background for the difference between cat people and dog people? Yeah, and among humans. Like, I'm certainly into cats. And some people are certainly like uh, have a dog mentality. I think that is not because of their seeding, but because of what has happened after the seeding. Some have become more familiar with one species over the other. I myself like dogs as a pet. All right, um, we need to separate. One thing is what you like, and another thing is what you are like. So some people behave like cats, are no, more independent, no. and some people behave more like dogs, as they are. Mm, yes, collected. I understand what you are saying. Right. That comes with seed, the seeding of your planet, and... Mm -hmm. It is amazing how the Anunnaki has put together your species. They are one that has made you look the way you look in many ways. They are the ones that put the human form the way it is. But there are many other kinds of seedings that happen before that. And different colors, of course, in that seeding but they have managed to bring your planet into a unitary look in some ways, physically. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I do not know about why some people act like cats and some people act like dogs. I was not aware that that was something that humans were aware of. Mm -hmm. I believe that when there are pets within the home, sometimes the owners start to understand the logic of their animals and adapt it into their lifestyle. Well, that is true too. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning from both the cat and the dogs. The cat is independent. She never relies on anyone. She is always relies on herself, relying on herself. And the dogs, they would trust you to, to the fault. They would, you know, forget yeah. about where they are and what they're supposed to do. They would just listen for you to take care of them. Of course. And this is because of how they were trained to be. Huh. But I, I'm dreaming about the time which I could... Uh, you know, it's impossible, but when I can rely on others to take care of me, and I, would, I wouldn't even worry about uh, anything else. I see. You it would like, depend on a cat or a dog to take care of you? No, not necessarily. But, you know, that's the, the feeling of me being responsible and being burdened by the responsibility. I see. I, I remember the time when I was trusting my parents, and it's not that I was happy, but it's you know, so much less weight on you. You know, yes. being, a queen, being a queen, you you understand, like, you're responsible. Of there is great responsibility in being a leader. Mm -hmm. And I believe I probably died young because of the high stress. Mm. Usually our people leave, live closer to 200 years. Mm. Okay, um, on that bright note, let's, um, let's have uh, some, uh, if you don't mind, could you give us something, maybe your poetry, did you compose any poems, and then I will invite someone else. I was not a poet, but mm. I did like it. Mm -hmm. So perhaps I can recite something that someone else wrote. Yes, thank you. Let the world revolve as I stand unmoved. But as I stand unmoved, I am revolving with it. There are great lights that come to me and then pass away. And what is this that I am experiencing in this lifetime, in this rotation? Is it that all things come to a cycle? Is it that all things revolve? Is it, all, is it that all things are moving and never stop? And I have come to know that there is great movement always and that you cannot stop and decipher anything without being moved yourself. This continual cycle shows me that I am in also a cycle of spirituality that cannot be seen or heard at this time, but will be experienced. And the universe will continue to spin me around and move me into places where I belong and where I can learn to move forward in the line of understanding toward God. Help me to bring my cycle into purity. Wow. Thank you. I just remember a couple more questions, which I think um, are important. Um, uh, one thing is that you were believed to be a, a, a very uh, merciless killer by you know, an Egyptian mythology. And I wonder if you were vegetarian. Yes, I was, for the most part, vegetarian 
unless I had to eat meat, I did not. Uh -huh. But as far as being a merciless killer, there were those that had to be punished. Uh -huh. And the way of the people was that they must not exist after a certain point. But having the understanding that they go into a new energy helped me to be able to do this without guilt. Oh, I see. What was the way of you killing people? I would have someone else do it, as, actually. I would not do it myself. I see. What was the way? Oh, I mean, maybe we don't need to mention that. I do not oh. think it is appropriate. Sure. Uh, how many deaths were you responsible for? I do not know. Like tens of thousands? No, not that many. Perhaps a couple hundred. I see. I see. Thank you. Uh, and the second question I had, um, I, I don't want even to put any judgment on that. I just, um, I'm, I'm just asking questions and trying to, to connect well, to that story. I wanted to add that I see things a little differently now. I see. I was brought up to be rather cruel. Ah. Now I see that understanding, love, and peace are a much better way to go. And I would not be the ruthless killer that I was at one time. Ah. Were you killer in the battle or in the peaceful time? Mostly in battles. I see. When, uh, uh, what? when they captured the enemy, yes. I see. Uh, how how was what was your involvement in battles? I strategized about them, but I was not actually in them. But when they brought me the prisoners, then I decided what to do with them. I see. Were your um, yeah, and that brings me to the second question: What were your connections to Khufu and others? Khufu was a greater leader than I. Uh -huh. He had great wisdom and understanding. And he was actually someone of great science as well. I followed the stars and followed his leadership when I was in Egypt. Mm -hmm. I was also a leader with him, but he was greater than I. So were you uh, on the same side? Uh... Of course. And uh, working together with some other leaders? Of course. I see. I see. Thank you. I think at that point, uh, things are a little bit cleared. And um, I'd like to invite uh, the next speaker, which would be um, Lyndon Johnson. I have some personal questions to him. Very well. It was good to speak to you. Thank you. Nice meeting you, and I hope to speak to you again. Excellent. And keep, keep an eye on my cat. I will go there now and check on okay. your cat. Thank you much.